Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're going to take a look at the Blender 3.0 Viewport Compositor branch that is now available if you go over to the development section of the branch builds for Blender. Now it makes sense to note that this is in anticipation of things to come and it doesn't really, you know, finalize the idea that this might make it to the next installment of Blender release. So with this branch downloaded and fired up, you would notice that it looks very similar to the current build of Blender. Now we've already talked about how you can work with this and just to buttress this a little bit, what we're going to do is to go ahead and get ourselves a our beautiful Suzanne and let's just subdivide that, rotate and of course put a simple plane or, you know, we can just take out that plane and explore with this one. So how this one works, like I mentioned in previous videos, how this one works is pretty simple. First off, you need to make sure that you have a material for this. So in this case, I'm just going to create a new material and assign a color to that. And then I need to switch over to the renderer. Now, once I switch over to the renderer, we need to drag out a brand new 3D viewport and switch this to the compositor. So let's get that compositor right here. And I'm going to close this. Now, once we do that, turn this on. And of course, you can now start doing some pretty nice things. Now, it makes sense to know that whatever you do here, do not implement except if you go over to the rendering section, click on the drop down and turn on compositor. That is when you start seeing any of the things that you've done within your compositor window applied to the 3D viewport. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let's just get something. You know, we could get a brightness and contrast. So I'm just going to get brightness and contrast and let's throw that right in. And to take a look at how this works, let's just zoom in. If I start cranking up the brightness, you can see we're having that brightness and we're having that contrast. So one good example that I do love to share is the hue and saturation because that's very visible. So we can use the hue and saturation, connect this right here, and then this goes over here. And of course, once we start making changes, you can see this. Now, the beautiful thing about this particular thing is rendering. So let's switch over to the camera and this is what we have. Let's also tap in on the keyboard so we can properly position this camera how we would like it to be. So let's just get that there and let's also move the lights. Shift D to make a copy, move this light right here. And then if we press F12, you can see what we have. So in this case, if you're trying to make variations of one particular element, let's say color variations of one particular element, you can. So you can have that, render this, and you can make another change, you know, render this. This is going to be cool for NFT guys. Another change like so, and uh, play with the saturation, do something like so, and this makes sense. So this looks good, but what if you would like to implement or add an image to this? Or maybe you have a video file and you're trying to do that match moving. You want to see if this is going to work perfectly with your shots and you bring in a green screen video file and you like to work with it, how can you do it? So for you to take advantage of these and also get that implemented, what you need to do is pretty simple. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag in this file that we have from the interweb. And uh, what we're going to do is connect it. So first off, I would need a viewer. So let's just go ahead and get a viewer and click right there and connect this viewer right here. So the reason why we're connecting the viewer is because if we'd like to see it, we can turn on the backdrop and we can see what we have right over there. Now it makes sense to note that whatever you have connected to the final node of the compositor, which is kind of called the compositor node, is the final image. And in most cases, that would be applicable to what you have on your 3D viewport because, you know, we have a compositor turned on. Now, if you have something connected to the viewer, it gets visible in the compositor panel. And this is just how it works. So if you want something to be visible with the viewer in the compositor panel, you need to turn on the backdrop and it will be visible there. And if you need something to be visible in the 3D viewport, you need to connect it to the compositor. So this looks all good and all nice. So what we are going to do is to simply key out this green screen and see how we can match these two elements together. And to do that is pretty simple. So since we have a green screen going, what we would like to do is to hold down Shift and tap A on the keyboard, and then we are going to get a chroma. So I'm just gonna get a chroma key and drop that chroma key right in here. And uh, with the chroma key there, what we're going to do next is to select the key. So in this case, I'm just going to select this green and you can see that we have this all the way out. Okay. So we also have it all the way out here. If I click on use alpha, it actually uses the alpha to cut that out. Of course, if you want to make changes to the cut off, the acceptance, and also the follow off, you can make that change there. Something else to also look at that might also get us these two images being in the same shot, let's say we want to get them in the same shot, how we can get them in the same shot is also pretty nice because if we go over to the rendering section and render this, what we're going to get is still this image owing to the fact that this 
is what we have going to this section. If we pick whip this and connect it right over there, and then we choose to do that rendering, this is what we're going to get, okay? But if we would like to join the both of them together, what we can do is simply use an alpha over. So an alpha over is more like a, a layer sort of node for those working with Maya. So if you've used Maya previously, there's a layer set of node that you can use. And uh, this works more like it. So we're going to use an alpha and I'm just gonna drop the alpha over right here. And with the alpha over, we can now select any of these things and you know position them where we want them to be. So I could say, I would like this to be the first image and then this becomes the second image and we can have that there and of course i can pick whip this and get that right in here so once i do that you can see that we have both images on the very same place so i can move this right here and also scale this down so what happens is if we go ahead and hit the render right now we are rendering both elements now by simply rendering these elements you can also see that that appears here so if i push this all the way you can see that it appears here and this is rendering differently and this is also rendering differently but we're getting them on the same place now if you want to get a full view of what you have here we can press the home key and uh, we can get that in and i can also push that down and position this right over here. Now, you know, at this point, I don't know who would make sense of this as this is still far from getting complete, but probably compositors would make sense out of it. And hopefully a couple of other people who would like to mix images together inside Blender can do that. Now, if you're wondering about the fact that the both of them are not exactly how they are supposed to look like, like what they look like on the viewport, it is worth knowing that you can make those changes from the compositor. So the proper image you should be looking at is the image on the compositor and not completely what you get from the viewport. And that is just one of the things to keep in mind. Something else to keep in mind is once you switch your camera to another camera or you just switch from the camera to the viewport, or you know, you just switch your camera out, the image takes form to whatever view that is available. So you have to switch it back to the camera to get it exactly how you want it to be. If you would like to move this object to several parts, let's say you like to move this one, of course you can. So what you can do is you can simply get a transform or you know you can get a translate depending on what you want to do and i'm just going to get this translate position that there and this node is not visible for the viewport at this point some nodes don't apply to the viewport so it's one of those things to keep in mind as well and uh, so i can move this i can move this forward backward depending on how i want this to be closed and like I mentioned earlier, your final image should be the image you see within the compositor as this is still within the works. If you're also thinking about combining these two together, you want to do some, you know, hue and saturation stuff, which I think is pretty nice. It's also worth knowing that you can. So this is sort of like the best example I love giving, like I mentioned earlier, because you see very drastic changes. So in this case, if I would like to make that change, it also applies to this. I can go over here and make the hue change and you can see that on the viewport and i can you know do all of this and of course you can see that on the viewport all right so this looks pretty nice it makes sense to see that we have uh, all of these sort of features now and uh yeah this is not yet a final version it is still a very temporary version as it is just a single branch and who knows if it's going to make it to the final version of blender as sometimes we get to see lots of things within the branch and they may not make it to the final release of Blender. But either ways, fingers crossed, let's see what we'll be getting. And for those who like to try this, you want to test it out, you want to use it, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right over here where you can download it and start playing with it. And that's about it. Of course, I would like to know what you guys think about this and the implementation in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one.